everyone and welcome back to my channel watch natalie spelled n-a-t-a-l-e-e -E. okay my dears very very merry christmas eve if you are celebrating christmas eve um, i'm doing this daily to premiere on december 24th so if it is your birthday happy birthday if it is a holiday that you celebrate happiest of holidays Okay, well, the um, psychic channelings don't take a break. They don't go on holidays, so there's there's stuff to report. And I wanted to make sure that I that I got it out and available for you guys in case anyone is um, sort of on their own this holiday season or um, just looking for a bit of escape from the festivities and um, and whatnot. Okay, my dears, so. They showed me a lot. They showed me a lot. And the first thing that they said was, and now we're here. And it feels like someone talking to themselves, like saying, okay, now we're here. <laughs> it, and I, I don't get anything before then or after that. It's really someone just being in this moment. And they told me to tell you that the answer to everything is meditation. And I feel like that's part of what they were trying to communicate to me, you know, just like now we're here. And it's interesting that they said we're, so it's like you're talking about yourself, sort of like the edit, not the editorial, the royal we, where you're talking about we and us, but there's just physically one of you you're talking. And I, and I do that for like fun, like to be funny, but the way they channeled it to me, I, I, I after I kind of came out of the meditative session, I thought... Oh, that's interesting. Um, until, until they showed me the rest of what they had showed me. So there's this fog around you, right? You're standing or sitting somewhere and let's just say there's all kinds of fog around you. You can't see yourself. You can't see, you know, your hand right in front of you. You can't see a few inches beyond your nose. And this is definitely a metaphor for something that's really confusing in your life or something that's really difficult to see clearly, whether this is a situation clearly, a person clearly, your own motivations clearly, your own feelings and thoughts clearly, or, you know, anything going on in a situation clearly. And yet it's, well, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? And what they showed me, it's really cool. It's really cool, you guys. This is first, this, this will resonate with you or it's like someone you're connecting to. But if you imagine, if we imagine that I'm just surrounded by this fog, okay, all this fog and, and dust and smoke and mirror, you know, it's all this very hazy Neptunian sort of seven of cups feel to it. What they showed me is that that fog sinking and I thought it was sinking but then I realized that it's you lifting and rising through it and they showed me this is a German icon um, Lady Germania it's 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 basically this very empowered feminine with this um, sword okay I don't want to get too much into the mythology of it because it really feels like there's there's this patron that there's this sort of you know, Archangel, whomever you identify with or resonate with, you know, whatever that is for you, it could be, it could really be anyone. Um, I like they, I know that they're showing me um, Lady Germania because I saw, I saw something years ago about her, but I know that it's meant to be taken in by you guys in whatever form that is meaningful to you. So for some of you, it's, it's a different mythological figure, okay? But I know that they're showing it to me as Germania because of my own little thing. Um, so I wanted to make that distinction that you are whatever that mythological figure is because it's like you rising, like literally ascending, like it's like you're going through the clouds, like you're on an aeroplane and you are, you know, rising through the clouds and you have this, this these huge feathers like you are an archangel, like you are some sort of big, and Lady Germania does not have feathers, by the way. It shifted, this whole vision shifted, and then it became this sort of archangel um, with these huge big wings and armor and with this huge sword. And it was just like, I saw you kind of coming through the fog and, and really with that sort of truth, like we've been 
like like we talk about with the ace of swords and the just i mean i always that always just like comes out to me and like oh my god it's a sword pointing upward um so whatever it is and we're going to get into it right now we're shuffling for this answer to the lack of clarity that's what we're looking for here that's what we're talking about because you're coming out of it i feel like you are either coming out of it now or you're about to come out of it or you even came out of it already and you are already in clarity and you've already begun making decisions that honor that clarity and this is really about getting perspective on what really happened and everything that you went through and all of the different things you know of the situation so let's go ahead and get started i just instinctively picked up this deck this is like golden universal i believe Let's see what this has to do with it will be different for for you guys for each of you um <laughs> but it's going to be confusing it's going to be obscured okay exactly what i was picking up on just like the haziness and like the mist this would be like a very misty influence with the moon this is emotional chaos this is absolute i mean on one side we have a domesticated dog and on the other side we have the primal wolf and what this signifies is that there's one part of us that is very primal and very instinctive and instinctual and then there's that other part of us that's domesticated the part of us that's trying to ascend being human okay rising above these human impulse Ooh, i'm getting a sexual attraction here this is okay for some of you this is someone that you are sexually very attracted to but there's confusion surrounding the situation either they're unclear about wanting you or you are unclear about how it will work practically or some on the line how the lights being shown um, but there's something confusing about this and it's they're giving it to me very specifically this is a sexual attraction this is an attraction that gets you on the very deepest levels this is a subconscious attraction with the moon card that's absolutely subconscious sexual attraction and what they're telling me about this is that you are you're a they're saying that you don't understand your own attraction to this person but they're saying that this is kind of a red flag that you're actually what is this about the two towers hold on oh i just got the chills i just got the chills i remember now one of you have emailed me about the uh the battle at helm's deep in the two towers in lord of the rings about how when the sun breaks across the horizon and then all of the Rohirrim army are led by Gandalf the White who has been reborn and so to speak in that forest and he leads the charge in and saves the day after they've been oh my god like the dark the night is darkest just before the dawn oh my god this this is really cool and now we got the sunlight too it's gorgeous it's gorgeous guys they're yeah okay they're saying that this sexual attraction is actually a red flag and that um th that when the sun does break on the horizon you're going to understand why you are so magnetically drawn to this person now because this is the subconscious and this is the strongest card right out the gate, it's like the birth card of the reading we know that this is this is deep this runs very deep within you and they're saying that the depth of the sexual attraction hold on what was that hold on it's a red flag oh it's like you're still at the battle of helms deep like fighting in the dark and everything um so okay okay let's me let's <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, we're going to clarify. We're going to clarify the moon and we're going to use radiant wise. Okay? We're going to clarify the moon immediately. Immediately. If I if I feel let me feel this out. Please clarify for <sighs> Yep. <sighs> It doesn't have to be a masculine it doesn't have to be a male this is masculine energy this is confusion surrounding masculine energy i don't care if you're male female or however you identify this is if this is resonating with you you have confusion about 
a very dominant masculine energy within yourself, within others, within your own father or paternal figure, or if you are attracted to um, masculine dominant energy, then you could find yourself extremely sexually attracted to this person. And it could be because they seem so dominant or they seem so capable or they seem so uh, like the emperor. They just seem like this perfect, you know, in control person. But there's something you're not seeing about them. There's something that is still hazy around you. And they're, they're saying that this is part of the red flag is that they're going to make you feel insecure in some way. Thank you. Thank you. That's what they were trying to tell me with the moon card. They're going to make you feel insecure. So if they're making, it's like, and it's not even like they, they would be trying to do this on purpose. They could just naturally unsettle you or naturally. And I feel like for some, for you guys, this is part of what is sexually attractive about this person to you is that they make you sort of insecure they make you sort of um nervous like you're, you're you're interpreting this feeling as being nervous and you know a little bit like normalizing this insecurity but what this is is this is someone who okay think look at it this way if they are putting you down if they are making a joke at your expense if they are trying to incite jealousy in you if they make you feel guilty if they make you feel like you're walking on eggshells like you're just sort of like oh you know they're the emperor but they have a temper and oh i don't want to make them mad i'm fearful if there's any kind of fear okay any of those negative emotions fear shame guilt negativity pettiness you know control issues you know all of those things are red flags and all of those things are like hit they're showing me they're like hidden in the clouds hidden in the mist that that's what make you know if they would be like the water droplets that make up a cloud oh no it just got cloudy again um they they would make that all that all would be hidden in those little itty bitty water droplets that make up the larger clouds that are keeping you from the clarity it is in the attraction and in the attraction is the secret. So you just have to ask yourself, like just being really real with yourself. And like they said, meditation is like the answer to everything. Be really quiet with yourself and ask yourself, what is it that is sexually attracting you to this person? Because it's that sexual attraction that's your, that's your like, it's your red flag here. Because if, if you like them because they're an asshole and you feel like that's so sexy or you like them because they're so dominant and they make you feel insecure, that's a red flag. You know, go through everything I just kind of said a, a little bit and ask yourself, really, what is it? Because it's, it's this, and you know, the moon card is also, it rules our subconscious addictions. Okay, so what they're telling me about this is that you are sort of subconsciously addicted to feeling this way. And this doesn't even matter about this person. Like this is going to be someone that you feel super attracted to sexually, that you feel like you two are meant to come into each other's lives for some reason. Like it's a very powerful pull because it's you actually trying to resolve this. Everything that you feel towards this person, you're actually trying to... What is that? What is that? What is that? You're trying to spark. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This, they're, they're saying the sexual attraction is the spark of enlightenment. That's weird. I got, that's, I got to write that one down. That's, that's kind of funny. Thank you guys. Spark of enlightenment. Okay. But they're, but that's what they're saying. They're saying that the, the intensity that you feel the sexual attraction to this person who makes you feel insecure, guilty, fearful, um, negative, or brings out your pettiness, your own competitive side, you know, whatever that is, whatever that is, that's your red flag. And that's when you know that this is, this is a subconscious addiction that you have. So then what you do is you ask yourself, why am I addicted to these feelings? It has to do with authority and how you deal with authority. It's your subconscious motivations to regain your own control of yourself, regain power over yourself. What they showed me as far as like you ascending through the clouds and through the misty haze, it's with that sort of truth. So it is going to be in the truth and being honest with yourself that you overcome this because otherwise this is going to keep running. It's like Oh, like an app that's running in the background of your life. And you're just going to keep being sexually attracted to the same person in a different form. 
and it's going to be bringing up all those same issues, the authority issues, the power issues, your personal authority issues. And it's going to, why am I, why are they showing me his throne? Hold on. They're trying to tell me something. Give me a second here. That's it. See how his, it's the, the, the rest is pointing down. This is pedestaling. So you guys, if this is resonating with you, you're, you're, you're pedestaling this person where you're putting them higher than you're putting yourself. And that's the absolute opposite of what is going to be happening by the end of all of this, because that pedestaling, it's like you're thinking, oh, it's what, tell me just, okay, seeking approval. Thank you. Oh, they're being so nice with me today. No, they're always nice with me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, um, they're saying that this is, um, oh shit, I just, I just lost it. I'm so sorry. Give it to me one more time, please. Wow. It's security. It's pedestaling. It's, they're saying that you're putting this emperor energy on a pedestal to seek their approval to seek, it's like you want to seek their approval and they're going to always keep you wanting to seek their approval. And I don't even feel like they're manipulative. I don't even feel like they're doing this all on purpose. This, for some of you, this could be very narcissistic behavior. Or you could have had a parent who's a narcissist or you could be like an empathetic person that consistently gets involved in narcissist, empath, um, empath relationships. Um, so... I, I, I get a little bit of that, but above all else, I get someone very self-absorbed. So it doesn't even matter if they are a narcissist or not, because they're not going to be good for you because you have the sexual, and I'll just tell you, they do feel it on their side, the sexual attraction. They really do. Um, and it's part of the toxicity. But the important thing to note here is that you are subconsciously being attracted to people and they're giving me, like this emperor is not like a the emperor emperor you know he's he's this like messed up emperor you know he's he's not like a full-blooded like real emperor he's 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 a liar he she whatever this person's is, is a liar it's it's a gross overcompensation and they they have their own histories with that but what we're focusing on right now is you and you valuing yourself and break it so let's see i feel you're about to like break out of this cycle like when i and instead of it being very circular um i'm just going to take the top card we have the knight of cups instead of it being very circular they showed it to me as an ascension like you're actually rising higher through the clouds through like that's really interesting they're showing earth as this really muddy place like with a lot of mud and sticks and like everything is stuck in the mud and they're showing on top of the mud like all of that fog and then after that fog it's like infinity and beyond it's like beauty and grace and love and kindness and all the good things like what heaven would be oh whoa they just gave me a really clear download I don't know why, but it was when I was looking at his helmet and and seeing his how his neck is sort of covered. Um, they're saying to love yourself. They're saying that you have to love yourself. That this is all to get you to love yourself. This is my Romeo card, the Knight of Cups. Romeo, but you have to feel that way about yourself. You okay? 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 They're giving it to me. Hold on. They're saying, I know what you're saying. Let me clarify the Knight of Cups. I know exactly what you are asking me. How do I do this? They're saying meditation. Please clarify the Knight of Cups for us, please. How can they? <sighs> I was going to ask, how can they do this? How can they achieve this self-love? The Seven of Staves, standing up for yourself, advocating for yourself is a great place to st Oh, and then bottom of the deck, the Knight of Cups again. The best place to start. Here's the thing. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I got it. Okay, so what they're saying is, you see how he's on this big hill and there's all these staves pointing at him and then there's one that he's like, ooh, you know, they're saying, they're saying 
Okay, so the way that I explained before about the emperor being a little bit higher than you and you pedestaling this person, you just think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now look at you here. You're the one who has the higher ground. You're the one who has the higher ground. So how do you get to be a higher ground? You pull your energy back. That's step one. So he, let me, okay. So if you have this visceral, primal even attraction to someone, a sexual attraction to someone that you just know is not going to be good for you, or if, if you even think they're going to be great for you, but then you ask yourself, oh, why, why do I feel so insecure around them? Or why do I feel so guilty? I didn't even do anything wrong. We just went for a cup of coffee and I started apologizing for everything. Even when someone bumped into me in line, I apologize. Like, what is that? That's not how I act. You know what I'm saying? Going, going through all of that and you realize, whoa, I'm having this crazy reaction to this person. That is your moment. That's your moment to pull your energy back. Okay. It's like, like cheating on someone. There's always that moment. There's always, it's never like, it just happened, okay? It's like, I just fell into it with it. Okay, there's always a moment. There's always a moment, okay? We're not getting into a whole digression about cheating and all that. We're talking about that moment, and this is a moment for you. When you identify your own sexual attraction to someone who will only make you feel rejected or insecure or smaller or, you know, whatever where you feel like you want to gain their approval, where you, f they could even say stuff. They could even say, oh, Natalie, didn't you, shouldn't you get a haircut soon or something? And I'll go, oh, no, don't say that. You know, or like there, it, it could be something, but then, but then what they're going to do, I, I don't know why they're showing this to me, like with the full hands, like they, their hands are like so full of stuff, but it's like, they could be like, well, well, look at they, they have their, this, this girl has beautiful hair. Look at, I, oh, look at that billboard. I love how this person styled that person's hair, you know, weird, crazy little shit like that. They could be nitpicking and, and trying to keep you low, trying to keep you smaller. But I mean, that's a really basic example. They could be undermining your confidence in many other ways, shapes and forms. Okay. That is your, that's your moment. That's, that is the moment to get out. That's the, that's where you, okay. That's your moment to escape, to pull your energy back once you realize that. And I'm not sure if we've talked about this ever before in quite this way. I don't, I don't really remember it. If we did, sometimes when I channel, I remember like everything. And then sometimes when I channel, I remember nothing. It's really bizarre. Okay. So, um, so you let me know in the comments if we've, if we've kind of talked about this, this feels really, really new. And I, like I'm saying, like the way they showed me you ascending is very different. So I feel like this is a very unique reading, um, for whoever this is meant for now in 2025 and 2032, you know, whatever have you. So the way to loving yourself is to first recognize that you have a very intense, and I am getting sexual, maybe for those of you who are this like 100% platonic, it's a mental attraction or otherwise, but they're really giving it to me that it is sexual. There's something really compulsive about this. You could even have a moon Mars connection with this person in your synastry. So for instance, if your Mars is in four degrees Capricorn and their moon is in four degrees Cancer, that would be an opposition. So that's kind of a big explosive sexual attraction. Moon Mars connections in Sinistry are very potent. It's an attraction on a, on a like an, I'm telling you, it's like a human level. It's very, very, um, how I said before, how one, you don't see it very clearly in this deck, but it's, it's a lot clearer in the other pictograms of the Rider Waite where there's one that's a domesticated dog and the other is a completely primal wolf, like an, like a creature, like a very, you know, a rabid dog. So you could feel like this about this person. You could feel like you are just wild. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You could feel this wild sexual attraction to this person. And this is the explanation. If they are rejecting you, if they are rejecting you, if you're waiting for this person to come around, if they undermine you, if they make you feel insecure, if they make you feel like you're not good enough, if you pedestal them and whatever they do wrong, I mean, it's a very emperor energy, whatever they do wrong, we're just going to justify it. We're just going to understand it. We're just going to hold space for it. No, stop. <laughs> stop it. 
Okay, let's let's call a spade a spade on Watch Natalie, okay? So so that's what they're giving me about this. You just have to recognize like, whoa, I feel this immense tidal wave of sexual attraction within me about this person. I could just feel it, that there are just all kinds of problems for me. That's your moment to just take a deep breath or a couple fast ones and then just pull your energy back. It's going to be the most anti, it's going to feel so not fun. You're, you're going to want to just talk to them. You're going to want to flirt with them. You're going to want to work in sexual innuendos into the conversation. You're going to want to stimulate their desire for you because that's the dynamic that they're up high. You are down low. It is a boost to your ego if you can get this person to like you. That's not what we're about here on Watch Natalie, okay? I don't care if you have one eyeball and you've got all kinds of debt and you are riddled with disease and homeless and whatever and you've got you no know, hair I don't care what you look like or what the condition is you are a soul in a human carcass okay it's hard enough it living this life it's hard enough you deserve better you deserve someone who's going to treat you with respect I know that was kind of a ridiculous example, but my examples aren't that great when I'm channeling. So let's just go, let's just move this forward. Okay. So they're saying that loving, okay, so that's step one is recognizing like, whoa, this sexual attraction is beyond anything I've ever felt before. And I'm so glad that they're giving this to me in the daily because a lot of the personal readings, it's like the question or, or the, the inquiry, you know, the my querents, what they're asking me is like, please help me explain this connection. It's It's so... I've never felt like this before. So that's a marker for this. Ooh. Hold on. They're giving me something about that word marker. Marker. You use it. They're saying to use this. Use these people, the ones that you're extremely sexually attracted to, use them as markers in your life. I see that. I see the timeline markers in your life for your development for your own subconscious watch like if you can even watch your subconscious and like it's all out of control you're you're not connected to this you're not connected to the uncon your own unconscious mind it's connect the conscious is connected to the unconscious via the subconscious but even the subconscious through the dreams through this and that even that's very very difficult to just go in and look around and just like put things off the shelf, take things from the shelf and, and whatnot. So use these attractions, these sexual attractions as markers for your personal development. So maybe right now you're attracted to the, the a-holes of life or the dominating figures or whoever's going to make you feel like that big. And then, you know, after you're out of this cycle, maybe you start attracting, getting super attracted to somebody else for a whole different can of worms reasons. We don't have to go all into that, but what I'm saying is that they want you to use this and actually take the information in as if you are a scientist of your own life, okay? They're, they're really saying to observe yourself in this sexual attraction. Maybe write it down somewhere in a journal or something. Take your energy back. Pull your energy back. It's going to feel the opposite. You're going to, like I said, you're going to want to flirt. You're going to want to be more involved with them. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to give me a ride or, you know, whatever. It's whatever the thing is. Pull your energy back, meditate, really center yourself, ask yourself the questions of why you're attracted to this person, okay? And when you go back to yourself, when you put the attention back onto yourself, let's hope that it diminishes some of the power of this person's, of what they represent to you. Because what they're saying with this Knight of Cups with the Seven of Staves, it's self-love through boundaries number one because look at him he's like you shall not pass no you know it's like boundary okay so if this person's actually above you like in life like they're your boss or something then yeah you're gonna have to say boundaries boundaries no is a complete sentence stop in the name of love before you break my heart okay so definitely you're in this position of like stop 
no, you know, put the brakes on and focus on yourself. He's, he's, he's on the higher ground. He has the moral high ground. It's also a card of entitlement. Now look how everything switched around. Like before you're looking up at this emperor like, oh my gosh, I would be so complimented if this person were attracted to me because they're so great and wonderful. Okay, no. You have the standing. You are excellent. You are great. Okay, it's about you. It's not about them. It's not about them. It's always about you. And, and, and watching, like I said, watching your own self, observing yourself, knowing thyself, okay? So when you do put that love onto yourself and when you do meditate, and when I say meditate, you can even just be quiet alone with yourself in your mind. Let all of the crazy ideas and like all of everything you have to do with all the lists and the to-dos and the pressures, like let all of that kind of chatter out and let it dissipate until you can get yourself really centered and calm and quiet with yourself and then tell yourself no i don't want to feel embarrassed all the time i don't want to apologize all the time even when something's not my fault they're really really sexually attractive but it's not worth more than than myself it's not worth more than loving myself it's not that that sex with them, that sexual attraction is not worth more than your self-respect, than you loving yourself. Engaging in a sexual liaison with this person will demean you. It makes you less. It's devaluing yourself. And it's not this person. It's not anybody else. It's you choosing this person because you're going to be attracting different types of people. It's who you're picking that makes all the difference. I tell my niece, I say, you, you just gotta, you just gotta pick the boys you're gonna like, you girls are gonna like you. You just gotta pick the best one. You just that's it. It's all you gotta do. You just gotta pick the best one, the best one for you. Okay. So when you realize that, what you're gonna get into this, and I see like the angel coming through. The, you're gonna get into this position of, whoa, I totally deserve better than this. And I'm hope, let's see what happens next. Because I hope that somehow dissipates that sexual attraction to this person. But I don't know. Like they're, they're totally giving me this whole thing here. So. Oh my God. We're going to clarify this. But I'm just going to take the top card. The two of cups. Now what I instinctively feel about this energy guys. Is that this is you finding someone appropriate for you this is you finding some oh 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 they're saying to, to okay they're t they're saying that you're gonna need to find someone okay so i hear what you're saying you're like well if, if, if i only go for assholes like how do i find like a good person or how do i be attracted to a good person or you know asking questions about that like the next step after all of this it is an emotional connection first it is establishing oh god what's that word they're trying to give it to me it's not repartee. It's not repertoire. Rapport. Thank you. It's rapport. So it's, um, so this is, uh, I know it sounds boring. I know it sounds boring, but you know, the cost of the excitement of this incredibly intense sexual attraction to the, the bad guy, the bad boys, right? Okay. So what they're saying is once you, okay, this is like the first little pictogram this is the second when you realize everything when you know the Rohirrim come in to save you and the the dawn breaks over the freaking hills and you advocate for yourself you stand up for yourself and you give yourself the love and you 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 fill your own cup up first and then you enact your standards saying you're not good enough for me you're an asshole you make me feel like shit you put me down you, you, you tease me when I tell you not to tease me about certain things or they're flirting with other people right in front of you to make you feel insecure on purpose or whatever they're doing. You finally get to this point where you're like, okay, I know exactly what this is. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to pull my energies back and protect my energies. It's also you protecting your self love. It's being Romeo to yourself, whether you are male, female, masculine, feminine, however you resonate. It's all about loving yourself. I mean, think about that. Think about Romeo. Think about if you were Romeo to yourself 
how nice would that feel? <sighs> okay, so buy yourself chocolates, buy your, take yourself out on a little date, journal, watch your favorite movies, buy time for yourself where you block out everything else and you just tell everyone that you're super busy for this one block of time and you just be with yourself and doing something you like to do, taking yourself out on a date or what have you, okay? Or even if it's just snacking at home with your favorite snacks that are only for you, okay? It's, it's, it's protecting that because then, you know, imagine that. Imagine you're having a, a me date and you took yourself out to the movies or you went shopping or you, you um, visited old friends. You know, you did whatever that makes you happy. And then you go home and you got a fucking asshole person criticizing you and trying to make you feel small again. That's not what we're about on Watch Natalie. That's not what we're here for. That's not what we are um, all about, okay? Ooh, this feels so eclipsy. This is really gonna like pop open someone wide, wide open for this Capricorn eclipse. Capricorn is also the ruler of the 10th house and authority figures and masculinity. I mean, we've seen enough of toxic masculinity. We're ready for some healthy masculinity. And that's what this is leading us into, leading you into, is that if this is really resonating with you, this is a cycle. This moon also rules cycles. And with this energy and what they're giving me, it's a toxic cycle. So you could have been in this cycle for fucking ever, okay? Don't judge yourself and don't be mean to yourself about that. Everyone learns at different speeds and we learn different things in different incarnations. So it's never, we never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever, never, ever pass judgment on the Watch Natalie channel. Just remember that. You're exiting this toxic cycle. You're doing the hard work. This is the hard work. This is the this is the soul work right here. Taking yourself out on a date is the hard part. Think about that. Think about that. That it's easier for you to do the toxic thing and go and try to get someone to be sexually interested in you just so you can try to feel better about yourself, knowing that they're always gonna make you feel small. They're always gonna make you work for that approval. That's the hard part, but it feels like the easy part in the beginning because you, you're, you're looking for this experience. You're looking to overcome this experience. So what we're doing for you now is we're giving you a fucking shortcut whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready for this, because some of us need to feel pain because pain is the greatest teacher. So if you need to stay in this cycle, you, you, I'm sending you all the healing photons. Okay. When you're ready, you, this is like that transition where you're trying to like get out of that, you know, negative toxic cycle where you are loving yourself. You are Romeo to yourself, sending yourself flowers, writing yourself romantic little notes and poems. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. And, and it's you protecting that. It's you standing up for your own entitlement, for your own good treatment of yourself saying, I, I, I'm going to stay in tonight. I'm going to wash my hair. I'm going to do whatever or go get a haircut or do something for yourself and defending the right to do that to your family and friends and whoever taking a mental health day at work, calling in and saying, I need a mental health day, mental health. My number one priority right now, man, I got to take that mental health day. Anger management's on Netflix. I love that movie. First time watching it. Love Jack Nichols. Anyway, so Maybe that was for someone, but this is you doing the hard work and earning the karma points to get out of that toxic cycle. So that boom, it's going to happen. You're going to start being attracted to people. Simpatico. This is my, this is one of my favorite soulmate cards, you guys, because this is that best friend energy. That's what you want. You want best friend energy. And what is best friend energy? It's equal equality. Look at them. This looks more equal. They're facing each other. They're sort of the same height. They're on equal land, equal footing. Whereas this is not equal. You're looking up at them. This isn't even equal. You're looking down at them. This is equal. This is true reciprocity. This is an equal. Let's go ahead and clarify. It's an equal give and take. So when you meet those people and the sexual attraction isn't enough for you, you know that you're still having a remnant of this toxic cycle. That that's why, you know, um, you'll reject people who are maybe a great match for you, but you feel nothing below the belt. 
I know it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. Now let's clarify the two of cups, please. But this will happen. And I'm not trying to convince you to be with someone you're not sexual. Oh my God. Get the fuck out of here. Sorry. I didn't mean to swear. But we, ooh. Okay. I'm not going to take all that, but I'm just going to, we have the moon with the two of cups. Oh my God. This is like full freaking circle. Okay. So listen, this is you guys. This is, this is, this is interesting. This is like the light side of the moon. Cause this is how we started. We started with confusion around this, um, this, this one figure, this authority figure. Now what this could be for, okay, that it is for some of you, this is actually once you stand up for yourself, you're going to be single for a while. And it's because you're still confused about what I just said about um, the sexual attraction and um, being attracted to someone who is equal to you and, and being confused about that. So it's it, okay. That's what they're telling me. They're telling me that it, it's going to feel a bit awkward for you after you break out of this toxic cycle, after you separate from all the a-holes or all of the people, the narcissists, the bad people you know, the bad vibing people that there is going to be some confusion around equality and around this best friend energy. Now, this is the one you can see very clearly that this is the wild wolf and this is the domesticated dog. They're both howling at the moon. Okay. I used to love um, uh, Metallica when they would go in the songs. Okay. Anyway, so let's let's keep this moving what is the next energy because i like where this is going so even though you are a little bit still confused this time about it's like well fuck i've always been in toxic cycles how do i be in a real partnership how do i be in a real relationship it's confusing you know you're going to be asking yourself well what the hell does that feel like I've never been with someone who I didn't have a just crazy sexual chemistry with that turned into a huge toxic blow up, blow out situation that ended, you know, super horribly. I never didn't have that before. Or, you know, you could have always, ooh, you could have always had this kind of a cycle going for yourself. So, you know, props to you for extricating yourself out of it. Let's see what's after this confusion. So just accept and let that confusion work on you because you're working through your subconscious issues. So now that you've gotten out of the toxic cycle, healing has to keep going. You know, you heal and you grow. And it's, it's, it's now time to shed light onto why you're so confused about a healthy human relationship with another person. What did I just say? Studying. Ooh. And then beneath that, hold on. Oh, I feel like this is all yours. Okay, let's start here. The Page of Pentacles. This is the card of studying and of learning. So you are studying and learning about all of this. Not just you, but other people, other relationships. Beneath this, we have the Chariot, which is gorgeous because it's going to be... The charioteer cannot afford to make a bad decision like this. They cannot afford that. Otherwise, the chariot doesn't go forward. The Sphinx will ask the charioteer a riddle about themselves. And if he doesn't know about himself, if he doesn't know thyself, nothing moves. If you move your chariot against the support of the Sphinxes, you're bound for intense self-destruction. Like you're going to blow shit up, okay? So it's like you don't want to self-sabotage again because you've already been through all those toxic cycles. So you're studying, how do you get what you really want in life? How do you work through this confusion? This feels a lot like therapy. I feel like a lot of you are going to go into therapy or talking to someone about your parents' relationships, your past relationships, the, the, um, and, and basically maybe even why you're not attracted to people that are good for you why you are so confused about this also feels for some of you um confusion in recognizing someone that's going to be good for you okay so you are going to be studying yourself with the chariot and once you really get that ingrained and once you once you become we'll go ahead and clarify this um and then i'll show you it's the ten of cups because the other card that came out with this okay I'm just taking these top three. There's another, there's like more beneath this, but those are the important ones. 
that's the true liberation is when you you really win and that's what i feel like is this this angel coming from the clouds and everything it's it's rising above and rising through all of the trials and tribulations it was a big moment for you it's it's, it's you're going to see yourself in a whole new way let's go ahead and clarify the page of pentacles the chariot and the ten of cups because the ten of cups is complete human love perfected it's human happiness perfect you guys know where i'm going with this this is a lot of self-reflection okay this is the only way forward is through hell okay the only way forward is going through the pain i really got to start these tarot um educational videos so i can just link you guys to the hermit card because i talk about this card so much but it's so important because what he does the hermit goes off alone to the top of the mountain this is you. This is what you need to do. You need to go off alone. And like they first said, meditation's like the answer to everything here. Okay, you need to go off and be alone with yourself. And what the hermit does is they think about everything and they feel pain. That's the purpose of this journey of this trek is to feel the pain in privacy and in safety and purge it all out, purge out all of the tears. I mean, for what it takes for our bodies to create tears and push them out of our eyes, like that's pretty incredible. That's kind of, I mean, that's like literally you purging out your emotions and your, you know, feelings about this. So that's what he does. He, he feels the pain so intensely because you couldn't feel the fullness of this kind of pain that was done to you if you had like a narcissist father or narcissistic parents or authority issues when you were a child that you had coping mechanisms okay you were not able to deal with it at the time even in young adulthood whatever was built and built and built upon these um it could have been even sexual deviousness or um, promiscuity unsafe sex in an unsafe manner further devaluing yourself, whatever it is, whatever this is, you were not able to process this at the time that you're going through it. There's no way you can be in a toxic relationship and heal in that toxic relationship. You have to separate. You have to get distance between yourself and that person, between yourself and that thing, between yourself and that relationship. But, and this is about putting distance between you and yourself so that you can look and observe yourself observe yourself going through all of this pain and that's when you ask you give it up do you have your come to jesus moment whatever you ask the cosmos why me why this why now why didn't that happen why did that happen you ask and it just builds and builds and builds more purging more crying and that is when the moment happens that is what you're studying you're studying yourself that's when the moment happens when you achieve this connection to the cosmos to the divine to yourself your own higher self you follow your own little light. That's the star card for me as a reader. You follow that little itty bitty light. It's one little light in darkness all around you. That light is you. It's, it's your, your soul. Okay. You follow that little light. You get your answers and you, you, you literally get to go through hell. The worst pains you've ever experienced going through reliving it again letting yourself purge all of that pain out and then healing yourself being a mother and a father to yourself in the way that no one was able to be to you whatever whatever wasn't there whatever you didn't get whatever wasn't available to you in terms of love and affection and help you were betrayed by these people. You were betrayed by the authority figures around you, the system, all the justice systems. I, I, they all failed you. And that that's what led you to continue that pattern to fail yourself and to go find people that are going to fail you or disappoint you or hurt you or make you feel shitty. It's coming to terms with all of that. Like, that's why he goes up to the top of the mountain alone in privacy because it's like a mess. You're just going to be like ugly crying lots of snot dripping everywhere okay it's going to be bad but good and cathartic you go through all of that and then what do you get out of that that's this is your karma points okay you get the wisdom now he's wise now he protects this light of wisdom in his cloak he protects it 
He protects it in himself. And he brings out that light when he's ready to share it with others. When he goes back down the mountain into the village. The, and everyone can feel this is not someone in a toxic cycle anymore. This is someone who has ascended beyond that. This is someone that I might want to learn something from. That I might want to talk to. And then they share their wisdom with the rest of the village. So that hopefully, hopefully someone will listen to this wisdom and this advice. And they won't have to go through the pain that this hermit went through, that you went through to get the knowledge, to get the wisdom. That was hard earned. Everything, if this is resonating with you, all that you're learning here is hard earned. Hard earned lessons for yourself that you will take and you, you don't get this in school. You don't get this in any other way, shape or form except having gone through it and living it. And getting your own ideas and perspectives and observations about this. So it's all back to you. It's all back to you. You guys get all of the credit. This is your part of your soul's journey. And like I'm saying, it's what comes throughout all of this is incredible. It's incredible happiness. It's incredible prosperity. You're going to have 10 full cups of happiness. You're going to move your life forward. What I get from this chariot energy, it's not just love and relationships honey it's your whole life that gets to move forward sun came out for one last little moment before it okay it's your whole life because this is seeping into other areas this could be playing out at work and love and relationships and your family dynamics and your friend groups anywhere and everywhere it's about ending the toxic cycle completely with anyone and everyone who's going to make you feel that way and treat you that way advocating for yourself, asking your subconscious, going through your subconscious, letting this confusion about love and relationships arise during your hermit work so that you can ascend this and, and get to this person, get to this relationship. What they're saying about this is that when you meet someone, you're going to feel sexual attraction, but you're going to feel an emotional bond with them too. And you're going to get to know this person. You're going to become closer to them emotionally before the sex overtakes everything. Whereas before, you're leading with the sexual attraction. and You guys can go to bed a lot sooner before you even know who this person really is. Because that's how strong the attraction is. Well, of course it is. It's a toxic addiction of your subconscious mind. Causing you to lower those boundaries. Lower those standards. But what this is all about is... Taking a step back, pulling your energy back to yourself and raising your standards, keeping those beautiful high standards, being Romeo to yourself to protect yourself so that you can figure this out, so that you can figure out how to find the equal, okay? And the way through, what did Abraham Lincoln say? He said, the only way out of hell is to go through it. Oh, I think there's another one. If you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hold on. Okay? You have to go through this. But look what you get at the end. It's like the karmic rewards. So wherever you are in this journey, whether you went through all of this already and you're just watching this video like, damn, that was a whew, that was a doozy, Natalie. You're taking me way back. I'm so glad and so grateful that I put the work into myself to get out of this cycle. Or whether you are in this toxic cycle and you've been searching through tarot videos looking for the answer and this happens to be it and you know what's ahead of you and you know how to do it or if you're already in the middle of doing it you're already doing hermit work and you're purging things out you've been purging things out for the last six months and now is a beautiful culminating point where you just feel so much better that you know what's ahead of you that you know that you're going to get through this Wherever you are on this journey, I am with you and I believe in you. On the Watch Natalie channel, we support each other. Okay, guys? I feel like that's a good place to leave you. I feel like that's an excellent place to leave you. I love you all forever. If you'd like to continue this, this energy reading further, feel free to book a personal reading with me. January bookings are open so we can get you on the January list. We're back to the seven day turn around. Okay, I am working through the holiday. I have some plans that came up tomorrow and for Christmas. So those two days I'll be out, um, but then I'm right back to it. So I'm even gonna try to fit in some work before then. So 
you know me just being a Capricorn working really hard so I love you guys take care of yourselves out there and feel free to reach out in the comments below or send me an email theartigan.com slash shop for the personal readings and um, make sure to reach out to others around you that are good for you um, <laughs> if you're feeling lonely in this this holiday time because it's hard for for people so um so yeah that's where i leave you guys i love you all forever and we'll talk soon bye